find out about this one. Gengar. Unlike most Pokemon, this creature used to be human itself and seeks to take the lives of other humans by any means necessary. There is no escaping it. Give up. Give up. Give up. If you've ever taken the time to read some of the Pokedex entries that Pokemon has, you'd realize just how dark and disturbing some of the lore behind these Pokemon are. Now, I'm not really a Pokemon channel, and I don't plan on uploading any more Pokemon content in the future. I just love talking about all things disturbing, so if you end up liking the way I talk about disturbing stuff, go watch my other videos after this. I did just put out a three-hour video on all things disturbing, so... In all seriousness, playing and experiencing the recent mess that is Pokemon Violet and Scarlet is what led to this video idea. My brother knows I'm into really creepy lore about basically anything, and told me the other day about a Pokemon known as Tinkaton, and after finding out what this Pokemon does to Corviknights, which is another Pokemon in the universe, it led me on my journey into the rabbit hole that is disturbing Pokemon lore. Keep in mind, like 99% of what I'm about to mention in this video is directly taken from some Pokedex in either the video games or the TV show. I guess there's no better place to start than to talk about the Pokemon that started me on this journey. Compared to the other Pokemon on the list, Tinkaton is a rather tame addition. This one is a cute pink Pokemon with a huge hammer and on the surface it just looks like any other Pokemon. But the main activity that this Pokemon engages in is rather strange. Its main pastime is to use its hammer like a golf club and fling rocks at another Pokemon known as Corviknight. And the reason it does so is because once it nails a Corviknight perfectly and presumably kills it, it can then use the scrap metal from the Pokemon's carcass to upgrade its hammer. It's theorized that Tinkaton does this because in its pre-devolved form, Tinka Tough, it is said to have its hammer constantly eaten by metal-eating Pokemon, which people assume in this case is Corviknights. So every single Tinkaton when they evolve is raised to just hate these birds and get their vengeance on them by using their dead bodies to upgrade their one and only hammer. Savage. Now I chose around 14 other Pokemon I wanted to talk about, but instead of just simply talking about them in a list, I thought it'd be a little bit boring, so I took it upon myself to group them together into categories that I feel perfectly exemplify what exactly these Pokemon exhibit. I'm going to be talking about these next few categories from least disturbing to most disturbing. Let's get into it. These three Pokemon aren't really disturbing per se. I think some people can interpret their backstories and lore as disturbing, but I personally think they're more so just depressed, which is why I'm calling this category Sad Boy Hours. Starting off with a pretty popular Pokemon, Cubone. I'm assuming most of you clicking on this video already know the proposed backstory behind this Pokemon. Now I say proposed backstory because there is some speculation when it comes to the validity of it. On the official Pokemon website, one version of the Pokedex reads, this Pokemon wears the skull of its deceased mother. Sometimes Cubone's dreams make it cry, but each tear Cubone sheds makes it stronger. I think you can understand why I made a sad category now. This story has been a thing since the first generation in Pokemon Red, Yellow, and Blue. Back then it read, where's the skull of its deceased mother? It cries echo inside the skull and comes out as a sad melody. People were a bit disturbed by this because when you take it at face value, it heavily implies that Cubone somehow watches or experiences their mother's departure from life and they take it upon themselves to then remove their mom's skull from their deceased bodies and wear them as a form of tribute. Even possibly taking a bone out of the mom's body as well to use as a weapon. It's been a mystery as to whether or not the Pokedex entry refers to one specific Cubone or if it refers to all Cubones. Based on my research, it does appear to apply to every single Cubone, but what doesn't make sense is that there does exist times in the anime where a Cubone and its mother, Marowak, which is the evolved form of the Cubone, can be seen at the same exact time, both wearing their skulls and armed with a bone. So this confirms that Cubones at the very least are born with their skull and bone. And because of this one scene existing, some fans believe that this line in the Pokedex, the skull of its deceased mothers, might just mean that it's given a skull from its mother's collection of skulls. Like the skull is the mother's possession, so this is the skull of the deceased mother. But honestly, none of this really makes sense at all because 
Just take a look at the size discrepancy between the two of them. Look at how small this skull is and how humongous this one is compared to it. This size discrepancy has led some to believe that it's not even Marowax giving birth to Cubones and that it's some weird Genghis Khan offspring because of the shape of their head. But even that doesn't hold any validity to it if you think about it for more than a few seconds. The shape of the head isn't even really the same if you really look at it. Whatever the case, this actually still remains an enigma in the Pokemon community because there doesn't appear to be any solid source that confirms how Cubones get their skull and by what means. Next up on the sad boys list is Zato or Zatu. Um, I'm going to call it Zatu because it just makes more sense to me, but this Pokemon is able to see into the future and the past. This is further confirmed by episodes of the anime, which a character known as Callista uses three Zatus to assist her in predictions of the weather. So we know at the very least that these Pokemon can in fact see into the future. What's strange about these Pokemon though is that they tend to just stand still all day long literally just stand there, no movement, all day long. All the Pokedex entry says is, they say that it stays still and quiet because it is seeing both the past and future at the same time. Because there's no more information to go off of, people have theorized that it sits still all day long out of sheer fear that it moving can cause possible futures that it's seen to happen. If you've ever heard of the butterfly effect, then you should definitely understand this. For those that somehow don't know what that is, the butterfly effect at its most basic is the notion that small things such as accidentally stepping on a butterfly can cause cataclysmic events to unfold and larger consequences as a result. If you've ever seen Hot Tub Time Machine, the movie where they travel using a hot tub, I don't even know why I explained that, it's literally in the title. But anyways, there is a scene earlier in the movie where they cause this squirrel to leave their hot tub, which unknowingly affects a huge play in a football game later in the day. Something as small as a squirrel not being in its predestined location caused a major football game's outcome to change. Because of the butterfly effect, Zatu also understands that something as simple as just taking a few steps forward or going about their day might have catastrophic side effects. So it just sits there in fear every day, all day long, watching the sun in silence, or rather, in absolute terror. Mimikyu is the next one on the list. I might also be pronouncing that one wrong. There's not a real clear way to pronounce these Pokemon's names, but this is the Pokemon that's on the thumbnail and for good reason. On the surface, this one does already look pretty creepy with its evil looking Pikachu appearance. However, its story is pretty damn sad. The Pokedex states, it wears a rag fashioned in a Pikachu costume in an effort to look less scary. Unfortunately, the costume only makes it creepier. Facts. And it says there was a scientist who peeked under Mimikyu's old rag in the name of research, but the scientist died of a mysterious disease. That last part implies that Mimikyu is so ugly that everyone died. The end. In all seriousness though, this Pokemon somehow understands that its real appearance is so off-putting that it can have some serious side effects on the human body, possibly even causing death. So, it puts this rag on it just so it can make friends and appear more friendly. Luckily, there is more information than just these two Pokedex entries as there is a website that archives all the Pokedex entries from various games in the series. And it also gives us the Pokedex entries for the two forms that Mimikyu has. Mimikyu can either be found in its normal disguised form like this, or in its busted form that looks like this with its neck broken. This is where the real sad boy hours comes in though. In Pokemon Ultra Sun, it states that in its busted form, it stands in front of a mirror trying to fix its broken neck as if its life depended on it. It has a hard time getting it right, so it's crying inside. There's also another entry that implies that its looks killed someone else. In Ultra Moon, it says a gust of wind revealed what hides underneath this Pokemon's rag to a passing trainer, who then went home and died painfully that very night. What's really upsetting about this entry though is that it doesn't appear to be malicious, or at least not with malicious intent. It just wants to befriend others and live a good life like the rest of us, and this does stand true. Even in small things such as Pokemon Refresh, which is a feature that allows trainers to take care of their Pokemon in Sun and Moon, although most of us just end up using it to pet our cute Pokemon. In this feature, you can try tugging at the bottom of the rag that Mimikyu is wearing, 
and Mimikyu will react in a panic, moving itself away so you don't see what's underneath. Little things like this make me believe that the Pokemon doesn't intend on hurting anybody and it just wants so badly to be normal. Even going as far as wearing a rag that resembles the most loved Pokemon, Pikachu. This will move us on to the next group of Pokemon that I've dubbed the Trainer Dangers. These Pokemon, while somewhat lovable and not intentionally dangerous, have been known to quite frequently hurt those that care for it most, their trainers. And what's most disturbing is that they do it without even realizing it. Mega Salamence is the first one up. This is specifically talking about the mega evolution to this Pokemon because as most of us should know, there are a ton of disturbing mega evolutions, but I figured I'd talk about this one specifically to give you guys a taste of the lore. The normal Pokedex entry for the pre-devolved non-mega evolution version of Salamence actually already shows us what could happen in the future. It reads, while basking in the joy of flight generally keeps this Pokemon in high spirits, Salamence turns into an uncontrollable menace if something angers it. And what would anger it more than by forcing its wings to grow and fuse together? The entry in Pokemon Moon, when you Mega Evolve it, reads, Mega Evolution fuels its brutality and it may even turn on the trainer who raised it. It's been dubbed the Blood Soaked Crescent. The Blood Soaked Crescent. I know I'm not imagining it when I feel like this Pokedex is straight up telling us that it's such a common occurrence for Mega Salamence to rip apart its trainer, soaking its wings in the blood of their beloved friend. There isn't really much else I feel like I need to touch on this one, so I'm just going to move on to the next Pokemon. Beware is a very loving and friendly Pokemon. I mean, just take a look at it. But reading the Pokedex entry gives a whole new meaning to the phrase bear hug. Once it accepts you as a friend, it tries to show its affection with a big hug. Letting it do that though is actually really dangerous as it could easily shatter your bones. And in Pokemon Moon, the entry reads, This Pokemon has the habit of hugging its companions. Many trainers have left this world after their spines were squashed by its hug. Really think about that. Ash is like 12 years old in the original show. And I'm sure some of you out there have younger siblings or relatives, or maybe you yourself are like 13 or younger. Imagine catching a Pokemon and you see someone playing with it outside that's that young. Then all of a sudden, almost like a saw trap, you see their head or body slowly pop as this Pokemon unknowingly kills them. Very disturbing if you ask me, but what's more disturbing is that this Pokemon is unaware of its own strength. It truly thinks that it's being nice and affectionate when going in for these hugs watching their trainer on the ground struggling to live who just a few seconds ago was up and ready to tackle some more Pokemon gyms. And what a better Pokemon to transition to than Sligu. Sligu is this adorable looking snail Pokemon. The Pokedex entry off the official website is not what we're worried about as it just states the lump on its back contains its tiny brain. It only thinks of food and escaping its enemies. Although this Pokemon isn't very strong, its body is coated in a caustic slime that can melt through anything. Just remember that melting part, how it can melt through anything. So in Pokemon Sun, the Pokedex entry reads, it has trouble drawing a line between friends and food. It will calmly try to melt and even eat those that it gets along with. Imagine a trainer is walking with their Sligu like most trainers do with their Pokemon and all of a sudden its tiny brain forgets where it is and it just starts melting you limb from limb. And not only that, but then it eats you whole. Truly disturbing in my opinion, but again, this is not done with malicious intent. This Pokemon is born with a tiny brain and based on the fact that it's in the Pokedex, I believe that it's on the trainer if they get killed because they know the risk of owning such a Pokemon. The next few on the list I'm going to be discussing are in kind of the same tier as the sad depressing category. The main difference is that these Pokemon were born into existence with disturbing issues that they really had no say in. Spoink is a rather short addition to this list. The Pokedex reads, Spoink bounces around on its tail. The shock of its bouncing makes its heart pump. As a result, this Pokemon cannot afford to stop bouncing. If it stops, its heart will stop. 
I mean, like, just why? My homie's just trying to live his best life, but he's forced to do this monotonous task for the rest of its existence. I found this disturbing mostly because of how innocent the Pokemon looks and it's constantly bopping around, but only those who truly understand the lore know that these are not happy bounces. Parasect is also a short addition to the list. The Pokedex for this one states, the bug host is drained of energy by the mushroom on its back. The mushroom appears to do all the thinking. Now this is just weird because if you look at the lifeless eyes, it really starts to make sense. It's called Parasect because it's literally being controlled by a mushroom parasite on its back that is said to just be controlling the lifeless sect that is the Parasect Pokemon. And what's sad is that its pre-devolved form, Paris, looks very full of life. But what are those things on its back? Yeah, when it evolves, the mushrooms grow bigger into a full-blown parasite that takes any life that its Pokemon had away. This is a kid's game. Why is this in a kid's game? Now the next one I feel like is more a commentary on a certain pastime more than anything. Stantlets themselves. This is Ray from the future. I just noticed that I somehow messed up the name Stantler. I kept saying Stantlets for some reason. I don't know if it was a typo on one of the websites that I was researching, but my entire script just says Stantlet. So you guys are gonna have to deal with that. It, I'm talking about this Pokemon though. Okay, let's get back to the video. Stantlets themselves don't really do or have anything disturbing about them. What's disturbing is what humans and trainers would do to these poor Pokemon. Its Pokedex entry reads, Stantlets magnificent antlers were traded at high prices as works of art. As a result, this Pokemon was hunted close to extinction by those who were after the priceless antlers. The thing I found to be unsettling is that if you think about how Pokemon are captured, it must have been so easy to capture a bunch of these in a Pokeball and then just spawn them into some kind of slaughterhouse or something. This is what I mean by it feels more like a commentary, a commentary on hunting or just animal slaughter in general. I like to think that the employee or person that wrote this Pokedex entry took inspiration from how humans choose to hunt deer or hunt any other animal for that matter just because they want something off their dead carcass that would look good on their living room floor or above a mantle. Obviously I might be looking a little too deep into this but that's what I do on my channel. The next group of Pokemon that I'm going to talk about are absolute menaces. These Pokemon know exactly what they're doing and the distressing part is that there doesn't appear to be any rhyme or reason for their actions. These Pokemon are just absolute menaces. Up first is Gorbis, this fish water type Pokemon. I'm gonna keep it real. I didn't think this Pokemon looked creepy until I read the Pokedex entry. It reads, it sucks bodily fluids out of its prey. The leftover meat sinks to the floor where it becomes food for other Pokemon. When I read this, I imagine it like how Cell from Dragon Ball Z sucks the life out of people. And what's creepier about this is that it's not like a straw. The mouth of this Pokemon is extremely small and straw-like, so it's quite literally putting its mouth inside of people and just sucking out whatever fluids come out. Disgusting. Cacturn is a rather mysterious Pokemon when it comes to its Pokedex entry. If a traveler is going through a desert in the thick of night, Cacturn will follow in a ragtag group. The Pokemon are biding their time, waiting for the traveler to tire and become incapable of moving. And then it doesn't explain this. There's no explanation for what happens after. Even in the other games with similar entries, it never specifies what happens after the travelers stop moving. Do they gang up on the travelers and beat them up? Do they take them somewhere else? Or do they just enjoy following people in the desert like that one cactus in the Scooby-Doo episode? Who knows? All I know is that it's weird and what makes it more off-putting is the fact that it blends so well into its surroundings as it just looks like any other cactus. Speaking of blending well into surroundings, we have Palosand, a sandcastle Pokemon. Now I think this Pokemon looks really cute and super cool, but when I read the Pokedex on this, my jaw dropped because I couldn't believe that something that looked like this could do something so evil. Palosand is known as the Beach Nightmare. It pulls its prey down into the sand by controlling the sand itself and then it sucks out their souls. Full on the sand style just slowly sucking the life out of you as you beg for mercy. This is a kid's game. Who writes this and why? That, like, I don't understand why this kind of stuff is in a kid's game and who is reading this and proofreading this and is like, yeah, 
let's put this in a children's game and that you know i will i will give this one credit i'll give this one and gorbis credit because they do specify that they only do this to their prey but still menaces now the last two on the list are just plain disturbing specifically the next one reminds me of a scene from the hunger games phantom's backstory and its hobby or pastime are very creepy to say the least. Again, this is directly from the Pokemon website. After a lost child perished in the forest, their spirit possessed a tree stump, causing the spirit's rebirth as this Pokemon. Now stay with me, that's just the first part. Here is the second part. With a voice like a human child's, it cries out to lure adults deep into the forest, getting them lost amongst the trees. When I read this, it immediately reminded me of that scene from the second Hunger Games movie with the Jabberjays that mimic the sound of your loved ones. Obviously, this Pokemon just mimics a random childlike voice, but still, that's creepy as hell. And imagine you're out with your friends doing like a bonfire or just exploring, and all of a sudden, you hear some child screaming deep in the forest. Even if you decide not to go help, this Pokemon does it with the intention of luring out adults, and it gets creepier the more that you think about it. If the Pokemon was actually a child that perished after being lost, then that means it's seeking revenge on the adults that let it down by getting them lost into the depths of the forest, in the hopes that no one will find them either. That last part is just speculation on my end, but I don't know man. That's exactly what it seems like this Pokemon is doing. Now this leads me to the last Pokemon on today's video. Drifloon. Here is the Pokedex entry. The gathering of many souls gave rise to this Pokemon. Perhaps seeking company, it approaches children. Drifloon grabs children's hands as if they're going to guide them to the ghost world. Although Drifloons tug on children's hands, they often end up getting pulled around instead. And none of this is speculation. There's even a mission in Pokemon Arceus where the entire quest is to save this kid from a Drifloon that won't let go of him. What's even more frightening is that in its evolved form, Drift Blim, it's way stronger and able to actually carry children away. This Pokemon, from my basic understanding, actively tries to steal children and lure them away. And the only reason that it does not do this successfully is because it's physically unable to. Thoroughly spine chilling, but many of you probably already knew about this entry going into this video, as it's one of the most talked about Pokemon when it comes to disturbing Pokemon lore. One question that always gets brought up, and something that I've been talking about in this video, is why? Why are these Pokedex entries so creepy? Why do they have these? And even me writing this, I'm sitting here questioning the reasoning behind putting these entries into the games. Because if you look through most of the Pokemon I talked about on this list, you will find the majority of their entries are just normal Pokemon entries in every other game. But all of them have these obscure one-off entries with these disturbing backstories for no reason. The other day, I was talking to a friend about this exact topic, and when we got around to the why of all of this, we actually came to what I feel like is a pretty fair conclusion. These types of Pokedex entries just add to the overall realism of the Pokemon world, because if you think about it, Pokemon are just this world's animals in nature. For example, the Pokemon that I labeled as Trainer Dangers can be seen in the same light as people that like to own exotic pets. There are a fair amount of stories where these exotic animals will revert back to their natural instincts and end up injuring or killing somebody. For example, the story of an owner named Cynthia Gamble that perished due to her pet lion attacking her. And the examples like Gorbis that have disturbing ways of feeding themselves can be seen in the same vein as the way, you know, snakes will just like swallow their prey whole. In both cases, the prey is definitely suffering through this, but we all think of it as just a natural way of life. The basic point I'm trying to make is that it's not completely out of the ordinary for some of these Pokemon to act the way they do, even regarding the last few that I talked about on the list, but it's just insane that on the surface, we don't really think of Pokemon that way. If you enjoyed this little talk on disturbing Pokemon lore, go check out my other videos. I did just put out a three hour video on all things disturbing, or if you want something more lighthearted, go check out my cozy vibe playlist for those that want to get a good night's sleep. Support me on Patreon. YouTube keeps demonetizing me and making all of my videos have limited ads. So it's getting a little bit harder to just support myself from only YouTube revenue. So go check out the Patreon. Second tier patrons get one day early access to my Iceberg and Midnight Fright volumes as they come out. And tier three patrons have one day early access as well. 
and exclusive behind the scenes content. I have three behind the scenes videos out on my most popular topics. So if that interests you, go check that out. Speaking of Patreon, it is time for the patron shout out. Thanks to everyone that has joined. We have around three members right now with the highest tier possible. So thanks to all of you for joining and supporting me. I really appreciate every single one of you. And honestly, I, I just can't wait to see how much we grow the Patreon community. I wasn't even expecting anyone to join with within like the first month. Thank you guys. Like I actually am really excited that I'm like getting actual support from people like this. So thank you. And again, if you can't you know, support me on Patreon, just keep watching the videos. Watching the videos is always enough for me. Just getting the, the content out there and sharing it with your friends. So if you're watching this, thank you. With all that said, I will see you all in the next video. Thanks for watching.